Hi, this is Roro. Welcome to Roro Rants. Today I want to talk about Esteban Santiago. You probably know him as the Fort Lauderdale shooter. Um, I'm going to call him Esteban Santiago. Uh, he's going to be known now as the Fort Lauderdale shooter. Some will call him mentally ill and he'll probably be suspected of being a terrorist, an Islamic terrorist. But Esteban Santiago was none of these things before he went into the military. He is the result of a harsh brainwashing military training that our recruits go through to turn them from honorable, decent men into cold-blooded killers. I'm going to keep calling him Esteban Santiago, and although I condemn his actions, I further condemn our military leaders who turned him into that monster and then unleashed him upon us and the innocent victims of their evil military empire that is destroying our nation and making us less safe. The Washington Post article on Esteban is titled, a senseless act of evil, motive of Fort Lauderdale suspect still unknown, authorities say. However, in the very first sentence of the article, they state, an Iraq war veteran who has complained that the government was forcing him to watch Islamic State videos pulled a gun from his checked bag and opened fire. Seriously? Motive still unknown? Santiago stated that the government forced him to watch ISIS videos. That is the motive. It's the very first goddamn sentence of the article. These wars are making us less safe, not only because they are creating more terrorists abroad, but they are creating more terrorists right here in our own nation, our own vets, are being driven mentally and emotionally to take drastic measures against their own battered, bruised, and broken minds. They are not born this way. War is doing it to them. Have you heard of all the stories of vets coming home and shooting up their whole families, killing their wives and their children, all the suicides? It is the result of the high levels of traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, and depression our vets face because of these wars. There was a RAND study, which is a paper that combined several of the most comprehensive studies on veterans. It shows that 30% of our vets suffer from traumatic brain injury, PTSD, depression, or a combination of the three. The military response to high levels of mental illness was to try and blame the vets themselves and try to say, oh, well, maybe they were already mentally unsound before they enlisted, as if the type of person who would join the military must be mentally ill, when in fact, many of them join because they need a job. Maybe this is why our government won't create jobs, because they want to keep people poor so they'll join the military. You ever think of that? Screening programs were set up to try and evaluate recruits based on this theory that maybe they're mentally ill. But what they found was that was not the case. And only about 2% were excluded based on mental illness. Further research shows that war itself, and even boot camp to some degree, is what causes the psychological damage to, that our vets face. We need to stop these wars. They are destroying us and making us less safe. The methods used by our military to enlist, brainwash, and train new recruits in boot camp is exactly the way a cult indoctrinates and uses mind control on its followers. This is unethical, immoral, and borderline mental cruelty. It is well known in the field of psychiatry that being in a cult often causes severe mental and emotional damage. It is no wonder that studies show that vets, whether deployed or not, 
have higher rates of PTSD, depression, and anxiety. These mental illnesses can be caused by boot camp alone, even in peacetime. Now, all of what I've just said, there are references for in down in the bibliography. I put all references to everything I just said. I'm not just talking out of my ass. Okay, the rest of this is gonna be my opinion. Okay, our forefathers, they didn't need to do this to men who bravely fought in the American Revolution. Those men were fighting for a good cause, against tyranny, for freedom. When you're fighting a war for these reasons, protecting your own land and your own women and children from invading forces, you don't need to brainwash the men to fight. They will fight willingly because they have the intensity and the passion that they are fighting for their lives and the lives of everyone and everything that they love. But the wars of the past few years, maybe longer, especially since Vietnam, have not been so. The United States is now the aggressor, the tyrant. And many soldiers wake up to that fact, either on or off the battlefield. I've seen videos of vets saying this. This could be what fucks with their head and causes them to snap. The military has brainwashed them in boot camp to believe that the enemy is evil and we're the good guys wanting to bring democracy to the world, then they realize that they're really fighting to oppress for regime change, to get cheaper oil prices, and then they realize that their brothers fighting beside them have lost their lives because of this. The feeling of betrayal, of being deceived by the leaders of the country that they love and have fought for must be devastating. I remember the feeling I had when I realized the truth about the role of the United States in the world and how I myself have been lied to and betrayed by the media and the politicians. And the worst I did was vote. I cannot imagine how much worse that feeling would be if I had actually worn the uniform and killed for my country. If there was an outside force, an enemy, a food, a drug, anything that was causing 30% to be mentally scarred and damaged and homicidal and killing innocent civilians, not even the counting the ones who are being killed and physically impaired, we would be furious. Where is the outrage? We must stop these unnecessary wars that are creating more terrorists, both ISIS and homegrown. When will we learn that war only makes us less safe? This is Roro, Roro Rants, and that's my rant for today. Thanks.